Where's my baking crew at? Here. So today we're going to make lemon zest bread, and it's a no-knead bread. And so the trick of a no-knead bread is you just crank it out fast, you cover up it, and you let the yeast do its work. So to do this, you need three cups of flour, a quarter teaspoon yeast, one and three quarter teaspoon salt, zest of a large lemon, and one and five eighths cups of water, that's 13 fluid ounces. Let's get going, baking crew. Can you move over there? And we can show exactly how this works. So, first off, let's get, we put all the dry ingredients in. So we start off with a quarter teaspoon of yeast, just using a quarter teaspoon, pretty normal uh, Red Star yeast or Fleischmann's, it all works. And this is what's gonna do the work. Instead of us kneading, we make a wetter dough and we let the yeast do the work. There's the yeast, we now do three cups of flour. It's worth being precise here. And so the way you do precise flour is you take it out of a heaping thing and then you scrape it off with a knife, or in this case, a dough knife. And we do three of these, one, two, three. A little, little bit more there, more of a heaping, heaping cup. There we go. Three cups of flour. Lastly, we need one and three quarter teaspoons of salt. So let's quickly do this and, and you'll see how fast we can go here. This just goes super fast. You do it, there's one teaspoon, and now we need another three quarter teaspoon. So we do three of these quarters. Here we go. One, two, and the last one. Perfect, and now we have to zest the lemon. So we want to do a kind of a large lemon that's nice and clean. And then you just take it and you take something and you can just start zesting it in that. And this is pretty neat. This gives it just such a nice flavor, such a nice smell. And you can really use any lemon for this. Sometimes you have lemons on a lemon tree and people say, oh, they don't taste so great. But the zest is so great. It's such a wonderful smell. It really makes a nice summer bread. And this is going to go great with olive oil. It gets a really nice crusty shell. Some people like to put rosemary in here. Um, there's sort of two types of people, those who like rosemary and those who don't. If you like it, you can easily add two, uh, two teaspoons of chopped rosemary. Don't chop it too fine because you lose a lot of that niceness of the rosemary. But otherwise, um, it works really well with rosemary as well. And in the future, we will definitely make a rosemary bread as well. So now I've zested this one lemon. It gives about two teaspoons of zest. Um, and you want to get it all in there to get a nice smell. It does smell. How does it smell, Bacon Crew? It smells pretty good. I agree. And you just zest off just just the top layer. If you're not com if you've never zested, it's super super easy. You just need this tool. I don't know what it's called. I think it's called a zester. If not, that's what we'll call it. I take my one and five eighth cups of warm water. Should be the temperature where you could hold your hand under the faucet and be very comfortable, but not anything more than that. And now take a look. Can you take, show them what this looks like? It's just a big mix of stuff. Um, here, we'll show you what it looks like. It looks kind of like that. And we're perfect. Thank you, baking crew. And now all we're gonna do is just gonna mix it up. And again, it's a no knead bread. So really it's high water content, which means when we bake it, we're gonna bake it for a little bit longer to get the water out that makes it crusty. We're gonna use a Dutch oven, which is kind of a fun thing to bake with. And it makes just a really nice crust bread. And the nice thing about this is you just stir it and it all comes together. And that's really all you have to do. There's not much else. And so we're just about done here with making the dough. Let me just come around and show you what it looks like when it's finished. It just looks like that. It's, it can be a little lumpy, doesn't have to be smooth. The trick really is to mix up all, the, all of the different parts to it. And what's gonna be kind of neat is uh, we're gonna see what this looks like uh, in about 12 or 18 hours when it's going to be bubbling and it's going to get much bigger So we scrape off the last bit from the nut from the spoon we used it's in We then come here. We take our saran wrap or plastic wrap Take off a nice size piece because we are going to eventually cover it with it Put it over the top and you do this I've heard so you don't form a skin I've never not done it, and everyone says we should do it, so we should probably do it. And then you look at it, and it's all ready to go, and that's all it takes. So I will see you in 12 to 18 hours, and this will be bubbly and huge.
See ya. See ya. Hi, so it has been 12 to 18 hours, and you want to be on the higher end of that because with no knead bread, you let the thyme and the yeast do the work. So this is what uh, our dough looks like. You can see it's really bubbly, still kind of loose. It's gotten much bigger. Can you see all that? Did you get all that baking crew? Yep. Great. Now what we do right now after 12 to 18 hours, and we've been closer to the 18, is we take it out, we use lightly flour work surface. Again, I'm not, uh, I've seen bakers who can just do this by throwing the flour. I don't have those skills. Get in a nice sort of circle about this size. And then very simply take off the saran wrap. And then it usually comes out pretty easily because um, it's pretty wet. Um, but if you need to scrape a little bit out, this I believe this is a spatula, but I may be wrong. So now we'll just very quickly push it out onto our floured work surface. It smells like pretzels. And it looks like most of it is kind of coming out here. Um, you can, so it looks like it mostly came out. If there's a few more pieces, you can just take them out with this and get the last bit of the dough. So, so your bowl is mostly clean. There we go. And now all you really do here is you fold it once or twice over itself. And the goal here is to just help get some of that uh, air out for the second proof. And so you pick it up, one fold over itself, and it's very sticky, kind of hard to work with. Two folds over itself. Then we pick up the saran wrap again, loosely, put it back on top. And now, we let it sit for 15 minutes. So we'll be back in 15 minutes. See you soon. Hi. So it's been 15 minutes that the dough's been resting. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna shape it into a ball and put it on top of this cloth. Now, you wanna choose a cloth that doesn't have very much texture because it's gonna rest for a while on this. And you wanna coat it with cornmeal. Now, if you don't, if you don't have cornmeal, you can use flour. Works just as well. Cornmeal gives it a little bit more texture that people like. And you want to be pretty generous with the coating because the dough is very sticky and if you don't put uh, enough down, it just ends up sticking and it's hard to get off and you lose some of the nice shape of it as you kind of scrape it off. And I may be doing that, so we will see how this, uh, how this turns out. So about that much, that level, nice and smooth. And again, you want a cotton cloth that doesn't have very much texture on it. Now I'm going to come back over to my dough. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, try to take, I'm going to take off this plastic. It usually comes off pretty smoothly. Um, it takes just a second here because it's you can see how sticky this dough is. Uh, come on. There we go. And now what you want to do is using as little flour as possible, but you do have to use some. I want to work the dough into a ball. And I'm also going to use a uh, dough knife or scraper, which is going to help me a little bit. I'm going to work it into a ball, and then once I have it in a ball, I'm going to flip it over so the seam, which is naturally at top, is in the bottom on top of that. So here we go. So you can kind of see I'm working it into a ball. Luckily, it's not sticking. The flour is helping. That part stuck a little bit, so I just want to put a little bit more down on the sides. Try to keep it going. Again, you want to work quickly because time isn't your friend because it gets a little bit more stickier as you go along. And you can see now it's worked into about as good a ball as I'm going to get. I pick it up and I put it seam side down and it kind of flattens out onto a disc. It's about the best we can do now. Take your flour and just lightly cover, cover the top with flour. You don't want to do too much here because otherwise you get excess. But if you don't do enough, again, the, we're going to put another towel on top and it'll stick a little bit. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to take this other towel again. You want to do smooth, so if it's a smoother side, use, use that. You put it down and you just leave it like this. Now, what we're going to find out is we want to leave it here for two hours, but after 90 minutes and when there's 30 minutes left, what we want to do is we turn our oven to 450 bake and we put the Dutch oven in. So we put our Dutch oven in then. So it's got 30 minutes, the oven's hot. So I should see you back in two hours after with the nice hot oven. And a nice hot Dutch oven. See you see soon. Ya. Hi, so it's been two hours now and our dough has been resting and now we can take a look. So come and let me show you what it looks like. Oh, that looks great. 
Look it how, really does. Look how nice that is. And our oven is at 450. We had the we had our Dutch oven in for a half an hour. We just took it out. And now what we do is we open the lid of the Dutch oven because it's empty. Ooh. Dutch ovens are very hot, so often it makes sense to kind of double the um, use two oven mitts or put one inside the other. Now all we do now is we're going to take this and we're going to put it in so that the top is goes on the bottom. You kind of flip it over and put it in. And if we've done it right and we've used enough either flour or cornmeal on the bottom, it should. And be careful, it's very hot. It just flips in very nicely like that. And that was great. And then what we do is we give it a good, oh, we to use the oven mitts because it's very hot. You give it a bit of a shake and you can kind of, it'll eventually kind of settle down in there. And that's kind of what it looks like. Just take a picture. There you go. No, Dr. Honey, you can just show what it looks like. And now what we do is we just cut a nice little pattern in it. So a nice pattern is something like, ouch. We can take three parallel lines in it, maybe just try to make it look kind of nice. One, two, three. And then we can cut a little design. This is to let the steam out eventually. You don't want to go crazy on it because the dough will kind of fall apart. Just something that looks kind of nice. Um, I don't have much of an eye for this stuff, so most people watching will probably do a better job than I will. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put it back in the oven. So again, we want a double oven mitt because it's super, super hot. Give it a good shake so it's nice and settles down really well. Put the top on. Take your oven mitts, give it a really good final shake so it's settled. Now we put it in. And what we're going to do now is we set our timer for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, we take the top off and we let it cook another 15 minutes without a top. After that combined 45 minutes, we take it out and we let it just sit probably on something like a cold stove for another 10 minutes. So I'll see you in, so I'll see you again in 55 minutes. Hi, welcome back. It's been 55 minutes. That was 30 minutes cooking in the oven with the top on, 15 minutes with the top off. And now the bread has been sitting here for 10 minutes. After it's been sitting for 10 minutes, we can take the Dutch oven again, it's still hot, so still you can use it. And if you did it right, it should come out pretty, easy. it should come out pretty easily, kind of like this. And you can put it on the cooling rack and let it dry. Now, if you look at this bread, I made some mistakes on it. Uh, so first off, it's a little lumpy and you can see it's a little backwards. So two things I could have done is one, when I rolled it into the ball, I could have done a better ball. So it was a, so when I put it down, it became a round circle. And second, when I then had to flip it uh, off the towel and put it in the Dutch oven, um, it wasn't a perfect flip, it ended a little oblong and I could have taken a spatula and kind of pushed it around so it would have been a nice smooth circle. But it still looks pretty good and in just a few minutes we'll taste test it and see how it tastes. So I'll be back in just a bit. Give it five minutes or so. Hi, so we're back. It's been sitting back for five minutes which is what you want for the internals to cook. And just take a look at it. It's kind of got that nice internal temperature. It'll, it'll go great with uh, olive oil. And again, if you wanted to, you could add two teaspoons of rosemary. Um, and let me ask my baking crew. Baking crew, how does it taste? Good. Sounds wonderful. So this is our lemon no-knead bread. As you saw, it's a quick, uh, not too much work. Uh, you let time and yeast do it. Hopefully you enjoy and keep on baking.